So the gist of this video is that 25% of the capital gain in your corporation are taxed. If you want to look at the details of capital gain is 50% of the capital gain is taxable and a tax rate for the taxable portion of the tax is 50%. So in this video, we're going to dive deeper into capital gain taxes in terms of how much you need to pay in the corporation, how much taxes you need to pay if you take it out, and what if you don't take it all out immediately, and how to best take out capital gain in your corporation, and how you should invest with your corporation so then it is the most tax efficient, and when you should do that, and should you have a holding company to invest in stocks? And that is really the final question. And the reason why I want to make this video is really because my goal is to make 30% return a year, and when I'm looking and making 30%, one of the questions I had for myself was really, should I set up a corporation and put my portfolio in it? Would that save me more tax? Because I have already maxed out my TFSA account, I have already maxed out my RSP account. Those are some of the topics we dive into in the program Investing Accelerator. So if you want to learn more, then you can go to the link below, grab the four hour training and schedule a free strategy session with me. And if I think you're a good fit, then I'll let you join Investing Accelerator and be part of the community. So this month, I'm looking to help 20 full-time professionals without a financial background to master investing and target 30% return a year. So the stretch goal is 30 people. So if you want to get the free training, just go down below to where the description is. Click show more and then below that you'll find one of the first links is a free webinar how to get 30 percent from the stock market in the next 12 months so click on this link and then afterwards you can read through what you'll get in the webinar and then you can write down your name and your email address and click watch now then you will be brought to the webinar so then you can start watching it in this video i just want to celebrate another three case studies from Investing Accelerator, where Bruno made 43.5% from Alta in 10 days, Stacy made 100% from ADP in two months, and Nash made 38% from CAE in less than three weeks as well. So these are amazing returns. Congratulations to you three, and keep up the good work. So bringing you back to capital gains and corporations, I think the easiest way to understand how to take money out in this situation is really to look at a sale, an example when it comes to capital gains. So let's say you have a commercial store, a property, and the purchase price is $1 million and you sold it for 2 million. So the gain is 1 million. Okay, so that's quite straightforward. Hopefully you're following me. And the taxable portion of that gain, 1 million, is 50% which is 500K, and the non-taxable portion is 500K as well. And this will actually feed into something called a capital dividend account, which I'll talk more about it later when it comes to taking out that money. For the remaining taxable 500K, the tax rate is 50%. So then that means the taxes is 250K. So when you think about your gain of $1 million, your taxes paid is 250K, so that means your tax rate net is 25%. So that's really how the 25% comes to be. But the actual tax mechanism is what I'm about to tell you. That means if you have a $2 million property and then you minus the tax 250K, then the money remaining within your corporation is really 1.75 million. So that means if you want to take this money out, this is how you would do it. Now, of course, you need to discuss with your accountant this is just a hypothetical situation because you're going to have a lot of other costs like transaction costs or whatnot. So keep that in mind. So first, you can pay out your initial capital of the property, which is $1 million. So there's no tax to that because you put that money in the corporation, $1 million, take out $1 million, no tax, okay? That should be actually what your share is worth, which is fine. Now, the second part is really the capital dividend account. So that is the non-taxable portion, which is called CDA and you can actually take that out no tax at all. So that means if you sell your property and you want to take out the money immediately, the first 1.5 million in this case can be taken out immediately. Now, the last part is really the 250K remaining after you pay the taxes, which needs to be paid out in dividends. The question is, well, should you pay it out? If so, should you pay it all out immediately? Or is there a more tax efficient way to pay this out? So that's where we come down to the scenario analysis is really the last 250K because the first 1.5 million can just be paid out on day one after you sell the property. So scenario one is really 100K. 
salary and you decide to pay out it all immediately. Scenario two is you don't have any income at all, which is very extreme, and you pay it all immediately. And this usually applies when you're retired and for some odd reason you don't have pension at all or whatever. So then you have zero income. Now the scenario three is really having a 100k salary and you decide to pay it across 10 years. Okay, so this is really a recommended strategy by accountants to pay it out in little chunks across 10 years. So it doesn't really increase your tax rate. And scenario four is again, you don't have any salary and you pay it out across 10 years. So again, this is a very extreme situation, assuming you don't have any pension whatsoever. And scenario five is having 100 K salary, but then this is a special situation because you never own the property in the corporation. So I'm comparing that to if you just own it yourself. So having that corporation in your name. And I'll also talk about a couple of considerations on that as well. Here is the image and you can see there's a lot of information on this image. So you can pause this video and look at it. So basically scenario one is paying it all out with a salary. So you earn a hundred K in salary, which is the left image you see before. And the right side is dividend 250k right off the bat. And the incremental tax, you see the increase, just do a simple subtraction. In this case, I'm doing it for British Columbia, is $79,124. So that is the extra you have to pay. What that means is when you're paying this out to yourself, you are getting taxed $79,000 divided by 250,000, which is the amount you get, which is 30% in terms of the personal tax rate. And that means the total tax you have when you're looking at the full $1 million of gain is 33%. And that number is actually the $329,000, which is 79,000 plus $250,000 divided by $1 million. So this is really the key numbers that you're comparing before and after. And that's how we're gonna go through the scenario. Basically what you're trying to keep that in mind is your overall tax rate here is 33%. And that is the quantum. And your personal tax rate for that 250,000 is 79,000. The reason why I need to separate these two is because the 250K that you pay within the corporation, you have no control over that. You pay that immediately in the corporation, even if you don't delay it. So that's why I need to separate those, those numbers out. So you can pause this video and look at your own province. If you're living in Ontario or Saskatchewan or Manitoba. Scenario two. Now in this case, you can see that you will pay it all out without a salary. So this is a little bit extreme because I assume you have no pension, no anything, and you have 250K of dividends. So the incremental tax is $48,002. And this means at the personal tax rate is 19%. So right off the bat, you can see this personal tax rate is a lot lower because it's 48,000 divided by the 250K, which is great. But at the same time, you need to evaluate, well, how likely is it for you to have no income that specific year. And then that will lead to a total tax rate of 29% divided by a million dollars. If you look at your personal tax rate, then yes, there is that advantage. But if you look at the overall big picture, when you're looking at the million dollar gain, the tax rate actually just dropped from 33%, which is 329K to 298K, which is 29%. So when you think about it in a certain sense, is not a big amount. If you're looking at the dollar amounts, then yes, hey, that is like $30,000 of difference. But in the grand scheme of things of a million dollar gain, it is only 3%. So if you don't think you will ever have zero income because you might have a fat pension, you might have a lot of investments or rental income, then it might just worth it to pay it all out even when you have a salary. But we'll continue and look at the different scenarios so then you can decide in the end. Now, the next scenario is what if you pay it over a period of time? So you pay yourself 25,000 of dividend per year for 10 years with a 100K salary. Now, in this case, I assume you don't invest that money and you just pay it out. And you can make it more complicated by investing it, but I'm just keeping it simple for you. So the incremental tax per year is 4,295 times 10 years, which is 42,000. 950. So you'll see that the personal tax rate here is 17%, which is 42,950 divided by 250,000, which is even lower than if you just pay it all out in a single year without any salary. So you can see there is a little bit of tax advantage here when you're comparing between paying it all out with no salary and paying it yourself across 10 years with the salary. And so the total tax here is 29%, which is $292,950. And again, if you compare that with scenario number one, which is the 33%, 
then you're saving approximately 4% of taxes overall in the big picture level. Now, scenario four is what if you pay yourself over a period of time and you don't have any income? Now, this is kind of a, an extreme situation because you need to assume you're really retired. You have no income, no pension, nothing at all for 10 years. So you need to think how likely that situation is, which probably it is not. But if you're able to achieve that, you might be able to just live off the dividends alone. So here you will find that the incremental tax is 0%. The amount of dividend you're getting is so low that the government is not even tax taxing you. So personal tax rate is 0%. And the total tax rate is 25%. So you can see that the minimum, minimum, minimum you can achieve is 25% overall tax rate. And that is really because you have already paid the tax at the corporation level on day one. So what you're really saving is that 40 to 79,000 of personal tax when you pay it out as a dividend. So now I just want to pause before I go down to the final scenario is that what is the possibility of you receiving zero income other than the dividends for 10 years? And when do you plan to have zero dollars? Like, are you planning to have zero income when you're 60, 65, 75? And are you going to actually live there and have another 10 years of zero income. So this is a very extreme situation that most people are not going to be able to achieve. And you always need to consider your pension. And finally, you need to ask yourself whether it is worth it to save 4% to 8% tax and delay enjoying that money for more than 10 years. Because think about it, you will probably take out this money at the very, very, very late stage of your life, which means you're delaying the gratification today. You're not you know, using that money to go on vacation or whatnot until you're 75 or 65 or 70. So you need to consider your retirements, your income level and how feasible it is and what is actually the incremental tax saving. Here is really the alternative. Now, what if you just held on to the property yourself so then you don't put it under a corporation? How would the taxes change? This is kind of a rare scenario when you're thinking about commercial properties. But this will become important when you're thinking about your stock portfolio. So let's consider it. So in this case, you would have 100k in salary and you would have capital gains of a million dollars. So if you just look at the table on the left, then you will be able to see by province exactly what the tax amount. And in this case for BC, it is 28%, which is $277,645, which works out to be a 28% tax rate. So that means if you are investing using a corporation and you have a 100k salary, you actually pay an incremental increase of tax rates of approximately 5%. And I think this is mainly because when you're looking at the capital gain tax rates in Canada, it is 50% of your 50% taxable income in the corporation. That's why it is so high. Whereas if you're looking at your personal tax rates, there is that incremental element to it. So your first little bit of capital gain is not taxed the same way as your capital gain for the last 100K because there's that marginal tax rate effect, which is why it seems like you're getting a tax benefit by holding the commercial property using your personal name. And this is kind of important because you are able to get a lower tax rate using a person. So then, but of course there are other tax advantages if you decide to sell the shares of the corporation instead of selling the commercial property, which is going to be a whole different topic. You probably need to talk to your accountant about that. But anyways, let me show you the summary because then we can consider whether you need a holding company or not. So here is the chart for the summary. If you have a 100K salary, you put the commercial property in a corporation and you pay it all out immediately, the overall tax rate is 33%. If you have zero income, you pay it all out immediately, the tax rate is 29%. If you have a 100K salary and you pay it across 10 years, it's 29%. If you have zero K salary and you pay across 10 years, is 25%. So that is a very extreme situation. Probably no one is going to achieve. And finally, if you just own the property yourself and you sell it with a 100K salary, then it's 28%. So if you look at it from a percentage point of view, then it is actually quite similar. But if you're looking at it from a quantum point of view with a $1 million gain, a 1% change is actually $10,000. So if you think about the difference of 28% versus the 33%, a 5% difference, that is $50,000, which can be quite a lot to a lot of people. So this brings me to the final question of this video is really, should you use a holding company to hold on to your stock? And the answer is not really. 
because you pay the 25% tax in the corporation, which is so high regardless of how much gain you make. Even if you make $100 of gain, which is not a lot, you still pay 25% tax. But whereas if you're making a small gain on the personal level, you're only taxed at your marginal rate and times the 50% of that. And since buying and selling stocks rarely have such large gain, you'll be rarely taxed at the absolute highest rate. But in Canada, they are trying to discourage people from using a holding company to hold on to stocks to delay that capital gain. That's why they kind of created this scenario. So when you're thinking about the flexibility and tax rate, it is better to invest in stocks using your personal name, which is my conclusion for now. And if you have any other views or strategies, then let me know in the comments below. However, if you're thinking about passing your stocks holdings to your children, passing your commercial properties to someone else, then it is probably better to consider a corporation, even though it is more complicated, even though it requires more paperwork, a property or a large stock portfolio that you want to pass down for generations will be better off being in a trust or a corporation. So that is really more complicated and that's probably something you need to talk to your accountant about. So I'll leave that with your accountant.